wir an. Schauen wir an. Okay, ähm, ich hoffe, es stört euch nicht, wenn ich mit nebenbei noch ein bisschen Mittag esse. Ähm, ähm, machen wir Englisch oder Deutsch? Ja, äh, okay. Englisch? Ja, okay. So, uh, that was announced in English, so we held it in English. Um, I hope you don't mind if I have my lunch uh, while I'm talking. Um, uh, this workshop is about um, the state of various projects in telephony voice encryption that are underway in the family and it's surrounding. And um, we're trying to um, get an overview um, on how difficult it is to build up devices for telephony voice encryption or how easy it is, uh, what different um, um, uh, uh, approaches have been taken to uh, to get to this goal of having a secure and uh, comfortably encrypted telephony signal um, by using a device, not a PC. There are uh, several projects um, right now on the net that are, have done um, that uh, by using simply a PC and the software and uh, doing an, an encoding on it, encrypting it and uh, getting it out. Um, uh, if I look at the number of um, software-based um, uh, voice encryption systems, um, I see that there is a strong demand for such a system because um, the, the uh, competition gets uh, more uh, more heavy in, in the economy and the people tend to talk a lot about the telephone, so uh, it's far more secure to have something that uh, cannot be surveillanced uh, both for your private communication and the communication of your company. So that, that is something that uh, that will have an increased demand, especially after the the publications um, uh, on the Ecalon system from the NSA that uh, do some more like an um, Hoover-like uh, approach to uh, uh, the uh, the telephony uh, surveillance. It seems to be necessary to have secure voice encryption. Um, you can achieve different levels of security from technical security that is only are um, secure for some hours if someone is after you um, to um, real security where um, you need to apply really heavy measures to uh, to get to your goal of having secure encryption. Um, I think we will cover uh, some some aspects of this uh, in this talk. Um, we have today here um, to my left uh, um, the current chaos project on telephony voice encryption and to my right is Lucky Green um, who will hopefully tell us something about the uh, current status of the Starium project, um, which is a uh, um, project that is uh, emanating from the cypherpunks corner of the net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe we start with this, the Starium project and can then go over to the to the Chaos project. Yeah. yeah? yeah? Okay. okay. Ah. Good morning, folks. I'm Lucky Green. How are you all doing this morning? Everybody awake? Who didn't get a shower this morning? Raise your hand. OK. <laughs> all right, about 30 percent, huh? Um, anyway, uh, let, me, let me first say that I don't work for Starium. I absolutely have, have no connection with the company other than the fact that the owner is a personal friend of mine, a longtime cypherpunk, and that I'm a very satisfied customer. But um, I don't get any money for saying good things about them, nor I think, nor do I believe Eric Blossom would be too happy if I said bad things about his, about his product, but I actually like it. Um, Starium is a company that um, is, is located in Monterey, California, it's just south of Silicon Valley. They have, a, the company used to be called, um, what is it used to be called, Comsec? I think it uh, used to be called Communication Security Com uh, Corporation, Comsec. They have a box that um, is the form factor of a standard external modem. It contains a um, it, it it contains a GSM codec and um, a hardware random number generator, um, triple DES encryption engine. It unfortunately it it requires only a 14.4 modem, but unfortunately the modems talk sync, which means that it ha they have to talk sync, otherwise it can't fit a GSM. Uh, uh, a GSM data stream into a 4 in modem. The only way to make it happen is for the modems to talk sync. It doesn't want to work in async. Um, so and unfortunately, software emulation is somewhat challenging. I've used this device now for a number of years, and I must say I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. Sound quality is excellent. I, I frequently use it for international phone calls. I use it for phone calls to Europe. I use it for phone calls to, to Japan. And the voice quality actually is in, is in many cases better than the voice quality of the existing line. So that, that's certainly, <laughs> you know, I'm serious. 
<laughs> it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. Even though nowadays most phone calls run on fiber, international calls certainly, but the, vo the voice quality is actually better in many cases. Anyhow, I meant to bring one of those boxes. In fact, I meant to bring two of those boxes, but I forgot mine, and I guess the other person that was supposed to bring the other forgot his, so I can't show them to you. Um, Starium, um, Eric Blossom had been making these boxes now for a number of years, but, but never really... Uh, greatly commercialized on it. I doubt he sold more than 500 of them. They have a company now, um, once the company was renamed into St in, in, to Starium, and received some funding. They're now building a device um, about the size of a Palm Pilot, uh, actually not quite, smaller than a Palm Pilot, that is the next generation of their voice encryption device. It looks pretty slick. I've seen some, some early designs. It's actually designed by the, the, the packaging is designed by the same person that designed the Palm 5. Uh, so, if you guys have seen that, it will be a really nice finish, steel brushed finish. Um, and now the good news is that it will be under $100. Currently these boxes cost $750 each. So you need at least to spend, you need to spend at least two times $750, but you'll be able to do that for under $100 once they actually go commercial. They also um, are talking currently with a number of um, of, of, of cell phone vendors to actually include these devices in their phones and have made some serious progress there, much to my surprise, I must confess. When will it ship? Um, oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, they will ship to Europe. Um, basically, what Eric will do is a very similar, very similar pl uh, plan as, uh, as PGP has done, namely to export the design documents and source code in paper form which of course is exportable from the US, uh, these things will be mass produced in Hong Kong and Taiwan. And so yes, you, they will be available worldwide. Let's see, what else is there to say? When are they supposed to ship? Well, they were supposed to ship uh, long ago. The new ship date, I think, for the first, for the first alphas is, is uh, sometime fourth quarter of this year. It's a pretty nifty device. If you ever get a chance to try one out, do so. so uh, it will not be open source, I'm afraid, but I'm not sure whether, well, it, I mean, it's, it's a hardware design. They're using, they're using custom chips, so yes, you can make it open source, of course, but no, it won't be open source. Sorry, guys. Still cool, though. However, we do have an open source solution here, and uh, hmm. Hako, right? Do I remember yeah, correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, met this, I met this guy at the CCC Congress. Story, yeah. Yeah. Hako here, however, has an open source solution, and probably... Yeah, we're presenting more about it. <laughs> Um, Sorry. You're about to tell about Tron's project? Later. Later. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Mm. Sorry, I'm so hungry. Um, 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 our friend Tron that, um, um, is now not, uh, not anymore with, uh, with us on the Earth. Um, has it an own project um, on ISDN voice encryption? Um, that was, um, in fact, his um, um, doctorate diploma bite. And um, he did a um, complete hardware design based on DSPs, um, where he used um, an, ex an external analog digital, digital analog um, um, chip and, um, and DSP to do the, the, the encryption and um, ISDN line interface. So it's an ISDN only device. And the problem uh, that he had was. Um, that his colleague that uh, wanted to do all the key handling stuff and all the um, um, ISDN low level stuff uh, had a heavy disease so that he uh, couldn't uh, couldn't do his part so um, Sean was forced to um, uh, to do everything himself uh, that ended uh, then that uh, in there that he did the cool ISDN stuff all the D channel protocol and assembler I've never heard of anything that crazy. Um, no, no, the old telephone PABXs were programmed in assembly completely. Yeah, okay, but that's long ago. Also the D channel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, um, the, um, the, the telephone, um, everything about this, uh, this phone is published um, in, uh, as his work on, on our server, um, but so far the, the projects to um, take this, this uh, thing further, we're not that successful because um, the, pro um, the software that he uh, left behind um, was not that very well documented. In fact, it was not documented at all. Um, so <clears throat> that's uh, nearly impossible for, for anyone to, uh, to understand the software without putting in the same uh, effort uh, than it would require to uh, do the whole stuff again. 
Um, um, he has uh, the, the general and main problems uh, has he just, uh, that he has solved, and the way that he has them uh, solved is, uh, are described in his um, in his text. Um, so that might be an uh, invalid point to start. But um, what what we found was um, that it's extremely difficult to um, to do such a project and uh, convince someone to. Um, continue someone else's work uh, that is not very well documented. So um, this, this project, um, I think uh, one guy is trying to um, um, to bring it forward in the context of his university workings, but um, at this time I must admit that this project is nearly dead. And um, so uh, I don't think that it will be continued. Uh, if someone proves me that, that I'm wrong, I would be very, very happy, but at this time uh, it doesn't look like it is. Yeah. Okay, now um, Hako mm -hmm. or Ingo will, will introduce the, the um, analog chaos um, telephony was encryption project and what they did. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the same idea of uh, well, the uh, need of uh, have private communication from point to point and uh, started up to build a design or uh, uh, still have um, an idea like we want to have we have a phone a regular phone line not ISDN an analog line and uh, we will have the same thing on the other side so we need a device which will do um, the encryption and in a way we can uh, securely say it is an encryption or it can be verified or modified by anyone who wants or who understand about the software encryption and so on um, so what we wanted was a standalone device which don't need a computer or anything else also yeah like a box uh, in whatever size and um, have it connected to the telephone and the telephone line like we will have the telephone on one side we will have the box harmless little box named in the middle and the phone line to the other side so if you start a connection it is just like you uh, respond a regular phone call you will pick up the phone if you want to have a, uh, the line secured you would just uh, put a, bu a button to activate uh, the device so it will establish a connection to the other side via modem which means uh, there will be a modem connected to the harmless little box and uh, at that point there will be a handshaking uh, the voice will get uh, digitized uh, by uh, analog to uh, digital um, um, there will be a voice compression uh, by GSM algorithm and it will be encrypted and get to the other side so we can uh, handle whatever algorithm, uh, algorithms on uh, encryption and uh, yeah well uh, by the way we wanted uh, to have it in um, open source which means um, in any point if somebody else wants to, to uh, verify this or have another idea or want uh, changes uh, he will be able to do so everything on this uh, phone will be uh, free it will be released uh, the board um, the software and so on just the only thing is uh, that commercial uh, commercial use is uh, prohibited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is step one. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, that was the idea. Any question at this point? So far? No. So, um, yeah. So, we will just show what uh, our progress is right now. We had some development over about uh, three and a half years. So, there have been uh, different microcontrollers which, uh, with different uh, capability of, of uh, processing. Um, and yeah, right now we have a design we will uh, present right now. Okay. Um, what we have right now after a, a long term development process is this board. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's only beta, so um, we are going to change that. Um, the current design consists of um, Hitachi uh, Super Hey Risk CPU, and that is this CPU you will, you will find in um, handhelds, Windows CE like like Cas um, uh, Casio uh, Cassiopeia. So it's uh, a normal CPU. It runs about this version runs about 80 megahertz, and we think uh, that 120 megahertz version will be the final version and so it does everything in software we don't use any DSP you don't have to hassle any DSP code if you want to program something on the box and 
yeah, the basic design is just the CPU, um, RAM, ROM, and um, a serial interface. We have two of them. Um, an analog digital converter, that's the most common from TI. You will find it in every US robotics modem. So it's really easy to build that box. The only, at this point, specialized device is uh, the line interface. Um, but the line interface can be changed by discrete logic um, implementations. But then the box will be a little bit greater. And yeah, that's the hardware. Um, so what we are doing with this, uh, so we, what we are doing with the calculation power, we got a lot of them. Um, yeah. What do you mean? What's what I mean? So uh, what we yeah. need this calculation power for is uh, mainly the uh, encoding of GSM. Like we need a lot of compression, like to have regular voice, and like we use it on GSM phones. Uh, to get it over the phone line. On ISDN we don't have the uh, problem because we had uh, a lot of band wide of 64 kilobit per second and if you want to have an analog uh, device we uh, will use a regular modem which ne uh, as means we will go down to uh, 144 or uh, 9200 mm -hmm. bits per second over the line. Not synchronous, asynchronous. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's the main point we need the calculation and collating power for. Encryption don't need uh, that much uh, calculating power, but that's what we uh, why we use uh, the processor and so on. Yeah, we don't provide the modem on the board. That's your choice. You can hook up an an ISDN TA or an analog modem to the box. That is for communication. So there's no hassle in uh, with FCC regulations. If you bring that box to another country you must uh, confess that this modem is FCC compliant. To just buy a modem in your country where you are and hook it on to the box. Mm -hmm. And at this point of view, if somebody has an old modem no longer in use, it will still be enough uh, for the device to use uh, for the encryption. Because I don't know who's, uh, any, uh, who has a 44 modem and is not using it anymore. So it will be some around or it will be uh, really, really cheap to get. Don't throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't throw it away. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. yeah. So just presenting what we are doing right now is uh, we have the GSM um, decoder and encoder yeah. running and... Tell you this. So the sound you will hear is coming from the ROM right now because we don't have two devices in the phone line here, but uh, mainly we will present you the a calculating power of the um, yeah, protocols and Algorithms we are Let's look. using. Phone. Beta. <laughs> Just checked two minutes ago. Hello. Oh no. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, that that was Neil Armstrong because this sound is not copyrighted. <laughs> um. On, on the software side, we use at current a normal GNU compiler for the C software and for the assembler part mm -hmm. also because um, you can um, cross compile that uh, package perhaps under Linux and build code for the machine. Um, you only, the other software parts we, uh, that are ported to the machine is the new lib. Um, because this library is um, re and rent and it utilizes uh, functions like malloc, printf, and stuff you always need. Uh, the next part is uh, we are using the GNU multi position library. So you need a big num library to do things like LSA encryption, Elgamal, Diffie Hellman, and this stuff. And, um, 
Perhaps you can do it in assembler, but I won't recommend that. <laughs> so if you have just a big num library, um, porting ASA, ASA to it is just take you two hours and then it will run. And it's very easy. It's, they did a great job. <laughs> it was easy for me. <laughs> um, yeah. The part of um, what you will, um, how you will encrypt the data is um, the part of um, what security do you need? Which means, of course, we can provide um, open key exchange systems. But if perhaps if you, for instance, choose RSA, you must take care that your um, private key is never published outside. So uh, I won't recommend storing your private key onto the box, and uh, because somebody can tamper that box if if he has access to it. So if you if you are choosing um, systems like RSA you must, um, we probably will provide a smart card interface and then you will have to store it on the smart card and take it away if you are not communicating with the box. Um, yeah. For the other systems like Diffie-Hellman and Elgamal, it, this is not required to, to, to have uh, keys stored on the box because they are generated on demand and um, as I now see um, an exchange and a calculation of uh, uh, 2084 bit key will take up to 15 seconds to exchange. So you have to wait until this key is exchanged and calculated and then you can communicate and then you have your then you must take care that um, the key you have to exchange for uh, symmetric key exchange um, is another secure communication way. So uh, what we will provide is um, triple dash, two fish, and and the stronger ones um, for communication or idea because but idea is more a problem because licensing if you put it on commercial perhaps is not permitted and we will see if um, the what what key system you choose is more more a user option because the box comes with the software and if if you if you tell if 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 you are in fear that the key lag is not big enough, you um, have to can change it and and just calculate um, with bigger keys, and then you will see um, if it's working or if it's working not. The most problem is the the, the software GSM codec decoding, which now utilizes about 50 percent of the CPU. So the other 10 percent will um, be the um, I/O communication, and so you have 40 percent of the CPU for doing um, crypto things. What is that? Thank you. 
So H of B will switch to provide uh, uh, support for the telephone, which means you can use your telephone and the voice will get, get in and out to the tele telephone you're using when you are using radio. Just as the voice will get digitalized. Mm -hmm. uh, Converted. I will get uh, encrypted and uh, compromised to go through the, uh, through the modem to the telephone line. This is the idea about how the uh, box will work and how it will be transportable and connected everywhere where you have a modem. If you want to have a more uh, uh, luxurious uh, version, you will still connect to the modem once again the telephone via the HOP, which can switch between the phone line directly, which will connect these two directly, or if it goes through the HOP to the modem, to the line. The, the one, one major concern in the electronics design is that we um, the, the gas try to prevent um, leaking of the analog signal into the uh, digital encoded signal on the telephone line um, because that, that's one, one of the major uh, forms of attack against uh, voice encryption devices um, is that you look for traces of the analog signal that's going into the device on the outgoing phone line. Um, so th that, that is one thing that, that needs, needs additional measures. But one, one thing about a uh, security level, that uh, this device, of course, does not protect you against a bug in your flat. Um, if, you, yeah. if, if you're if you bugged, um, this will not help you. Um, this is only, the, the aim of, of such a project is only uh, to prevent um, your telephone conversations getting into this NSA Hoover Echelon uh, and being sucked up and analyzed. And uh, that that is the only 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 real purpose of that uh, that project. And um, how much security you achieve with this uh, system is not so much a question of um, of the length of the key that you're using, but very much more a uh, question of the procedures you're using when telephoning is secure. So um, you you need to verify with whom you are communicating. You need to verify that the telephone that you are using is not bugged. Uh, you need to verify that your your, your room is not bugged. So that that uh, that is a um, very much more uh, concerning problem there. Mm. Yeah. The other point is uh, why we are using uh, we are using free software. So um, the point is that uh, this software can run on a PC also. You have to change just the load level drivers and um, for serial and, and audio communication and then this software might run on a, a Linux and or Windows or Macintosh also so you have to you don't have to reinvent the wheel another time and um, but that's not our point so uh, perhaps if, if people like that project they will find a way porting it to other uh, platforms There, there is a certain problem uh, um, if the, the device is not properly shielded that uh, there might be a possibility to guess the state of the encryption engine uh, by using uh, tempest emanation. That means uh, um, the emanations that are uh, from the CPU and uh, that the HF is generated there. And uh, so um, building such a device besides is not only a difficult problem in terms of building up the electronic, getting the CPU to work bring the compressor to work and uh, bring the, the encryption engine to work and uh, stick it all together. Uh, but also in terms of uh, building a proper enclosure for it, uh, and looking for the line interface that, uh, that doesn't leak. So that, that's not, not an, uh, an easy task uh, uh, of doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, 
Um, the, um, the, the real data that is, uh, 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 needs to be protected is going through the model in, in digital form. And so um, what can be done is that uh, uh, the electronics is built in a way that uh, you block the, um, the digital signal uh, galvanically from the uh, from the from the rest of the um, of the electronics. So uh, the The status is um, that we are we have done all the low level stuff. Um, which means we are now at the point where we think about um, what should be in the software, how does the device communicate over the serial line, and um, the next point that is a parallel point is to build up a final hardware, because this is one is only beta, so it will take up nearly half a year to, to make it uh, market ripe, perhaps. So the next communication congress in December, we will have it ready. You know, if I I'm a technician. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, if I would be the, the project manager, it would be ready uh, to the Congress, but the problem is that our um, it will be ready at the Congress. I heard this uh, now two or three times. So, <laughs> okay, so l let's see at the Congress what's happened. Mm. So. What's, what's the exchange going to be? Are you still doing chip or? Mm, that that, um, that, the point is, uh, if you are doing key exchange, you can use Elgamal and Diffie Hellman without storing any keys or any things onto the Thank device. You. If you are going to use RSA, you must provide a smart card interface to store your private key onto the um, smart card. And I recommend uh, the cheapest way will be the German um, Krankenkassenkarte because it u utilizes about 4K of memory after your address. Insurance cards and but uh, so you can hide your key on on any card, but. Um, um, it, this is not, uh, the, the point is you have to choose your public key system if, uh, if, you, if you're satisfied using Elgamal and Diffie Hellman, it works for you. But I can show you how it calculates if, if this pylon doesn't get stopped by the serial communication. Probably will connect the modem to, but we have a, a second. Uh, but 
too. So the idea about it is there will be uh, a new wave uh, which we can use a device for our problem. We still will have the um, telephone. We still have the armless little box. We have the modem over here. This is mine. And uh, what we can connect here is, for example, a PC. Um, the idea about this, uh, we can now do uh, also um, yeah, managing of, of keys or whatsoever to exchange with the HLV while it is running. Or we will have some software, which is not written uh, yet. We can uh, also send also messages in the spare time when uh, there is no conversation on the line. It can also be shown on the display directly, which means on the other side there will only be an HLV to display a message or whatever, like a, a smart chat, a, a chat in written form without talking. Um, Isn't that a bit of a 1980 solution? If you have PCs on both ends, why not do the speech on the PC and just do IP? And have all the encryption of IPsec or... Because of software tampering? Um, I think... Yeah, it if you do key management or anything on the PC, the PC is... is that's well, only that's one option. This is an option. We still want to have a single device which can be used without a PC. We will just have the box and have, uh, well, an encrypted uh, conversation. You can also use it as um, encryption for uh, fax systems because you have connected a modem, you have the HLB in between communicating with your PC, so you can do any type of encryption or, or this alike, um, it, it can be as transparent as a modem f looking on your PC side. Or you uh, can use an, an, a Palm Pilot or some storage device for, uh, for key stuff, or you can, can even, uh, even choose to, to uh, use a Palm Pilot to communicate or, or check your mail or whatever over the system. Yeah, that, that, that's the idea behind it. Yeah. So far. I'll talk about this right now. Yeah. So uh, we also have a, a way of a computer which will be connected to uh, like like a PBS or whatever and then uh, hold that way without IP. Uh, it will be able to, without the telephone, without using it at this point of usage, uh, the modem can get, or the, the, the line data can get encrypted and transparently automated to the PC. Means there will be a way of securely have a data conversation with a regular modem uh, and over the HLV to the same record of the PC without knowing any software running on the PC. There is no custom software necessary at this point. Like, if, for example, you can run a BBS or whatever, it will just be able to reach through an HLV on the other side. If it is, 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 is configured like this, just to accept calls, we will have an HLV on the other side. Which means you can have a notebook, you will have an HLD, there will be an HLD as a PC at your home, which will answer all uh, calls, and there will be the software, your, your personal mailbox, your uh, remote access, or whatever. It will be encrypted and it is secure just that you and only you, with the right key for, for your uh, HLD, will be able to connect there and exchange uh, the data. So also you can use it for other um, software like PC Anywhere, I don't know, uh, for um, uh, remote access and uh, remote. Uh, customer service, which we don't know if it is secure or not, or not totally, because in this way, the data which get uh, transmitted would get encrypted. And calls answered by the PC with the software can just get answered uh, if there's a uh, HLV with the right code on the other side. Okay, so there's one more way. Uh, so say, uh, the PC will send the information, will get encrypted, and uh, the other way, with our telephone, we're talking about it. Right here. There's one more way, and uh, like if the modem is not connected to the HLV, it might not be here on the PC. Um, it can be IP or uh, whatever other protocol to get to the other side. So, um, at this point, you can also use a telephone once again to run through the HLV through the PC the software to go to, to, to the modem. Uh, that's a waste of space. Yeah, add, please add a sound card and then do it also on the PC. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on this way we can also do it over TCP IP. Uh, so, uh, uh, this way, and 
decoded and to be an M compressed with the A to B. When you do the telephone, but like a sound card, there's an A to B like a sound card, and but also doing a lot of calculating power, which uh, well, all the PCs are not compatible for. You can see the way. Why not put a little screen and a keyboard on the H L B and an Ethernet port? Um, good point. Um, did you ever port an uh, IP stack to um, um, just basic raw device? Mm, no, 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 no. Okay, I, I, we were thinking about um, at the present time we know two solutions that can handle it. Um, one point is porting Linux to the HLB, which is possible requires a little more flash RAM because Linux utilizes about one meg of flash RAM. And uh, the current um, RAM configuration is no less than four megabytes. That's crazy. We, we, we never ever use four megabytes of RAM, but uh, it's the lowest um, uh, SD RAM we can get. Um, if you think that that IP is a solution for everything, you can port either Linux or. But this is just too great. Imagine you have you have a whole you have a whole system, and uh, the software um, uh, you are running for secure communication is that low, and so you have to 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 look if there's. If, if nobody has tempered your, your Linux implementation with something, you have to check that. If, as, as far as the software is, is um, as close to the machine and is um, very small, you can control it. You can see what, what does this software. Now nah, this is not the normal way of using it, but um, not for the no no no. I, but um, the other way is uh, uh, um, real-time executives like like Atoms, uh, which comes with um, with uh, an IP stack, um, but uh, I won't recommend it because. Um, can um, you can Because um, you don't need it if two devices are talking together. You only need it if your box is only connected to the internet. And that gives you more pressure about latency on the internet and, and it's not really good for, communi for direct communication. Is that the point? Okay. I think really one of the major advantages of this design is that you concentrate all the security onto a very small amount of hard and software which you can control very easily. So this is I think really the advantage. You can look into the hardware design, see every gate and you can uh, trace down the software with your debugger and verify that there's nothing wrong going on. So it's just a part which you can plug into rather complex uh, systems to handle se the security and um, the device itself is quite independent and it's rather difficult to modify it from something outside. We paid attention to that, so. so what's the, the status of the software and hardware? Is it freely available, available for yeah, use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, no, it is but, not available for commercial use yet, or at least we need uh, to think about this first, under what license it will be possible. This is an open uh, source project, but uh, no commercial use or not yet. We think about it to get it distributed, as there's not this problem, but um, since we are development, uh, developing it, uh, we want to have a, a bit of control, like to see how it gets uh, um, used and, and where to, to get it and so on. And, so and we don't want a marketing yeah. uh, department that putting pressure on us. And on the other way, so and getting around bad designs very early. Yeah, and he is making 
big money by uh, getting our device working. Not only working, just um, to, to, to manufacture. What we want is, if it is free to use, if you build boxes, it's okay, but if you make money with this, I'm talking about um, selling it with uh, more than what you have to pay for, for manufacturing the box, it's not okay. Be, um, we want, uh, what we want is to give back something and of course uh, we have um, we have spent a lot of money to get it working and yeah, buy an oscilloscope and you will see what it costs. So it's just uh, like, uh, also we want to have it distributed if uh, there's use it for it, if somebody wants to use it, uh, he can build it uh, um, uh, himself, herself. Uh, on the other hand, if there's commercial use, uh, there might be if somebody, well, uh, make uh, um, yeah, a, a, a bit of money when selling this and doing service in this, okay, but on the other hand, we want to have uh, the ready-built PCBs uh, with a processor on it, which is not easy to uh, sold on it, uh, ready to, to give it to uh, end users. Huh? I think, I think. I think we will, we, we will discuss that, but first let us finish. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys are really paranoid about marketing, so let them finish and then we market it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First, get ready, and then and and then get the sales droid to sell that stuff. Okay. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about randomness? Any questions? Yes. Random. Mm -hmm. Um, you have basically two ways. Uh, one way is that you have a shared private secret key with the other user, so you won't have to use any pub public key system. And if you don't have that, um, you have to use a public key system, which uh, what will come with the box will be LSA and Diffie-Hellman respect to Elgamal. So, um, this is not a problem. The, there are more problems like um, man-in-the-middle attacks where um, your, your key can be altered. Uh, so you have, if, if you are if you, um, using um, these uh, key systems, you have to verify that the other side is really the other side. So you can you can do that by um, just um, transmitting a hash key, so both sides in independently generate, uh, uh, verify the hash, and and if you um, if you start to communicate, you tell the other side the hash key over the secure line, and if it matches, you're on the secure side because your key is not going to be altered through the hash key. So this is. Can I, can, hmm? can I rephrase that? May I? Diffie uh, Hellman is, is a really cool way yeah. for two people to securely establish a secret of something they know. Um, so Dann wie man gibt's uns. Yeah. I think what hasn't been said here is that the Diffie Hellman method, Diffie Hellman algorithm is a really cool way to establish a secret which only two people know, even though they have no prior exchange secrets or exchange public keys or anything. Uh, the only thing is that you know that you have done this secure communication with a party, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but you don't know if it's really the other end or somebody in the middle. So if you, if you make a short version of that key and read it to the other person, then the other person that knows your voice 
can then verify that, that you have the same hash as the other side. Yeah. So any man in the middle would then have to intercept, be the man in the middle, arrange for two different keys because each party could verify that his own randomness was used in that, in that key, would have to intercept both channels and would then have to wait for you to read that hash, have somebody there with your voice or some machine with your voice and then instantly in, insert the other hash that you're not reading and then have the conversation go back to normal, which is still possible, but it's a drag. And it's not something they, yeah. can, they can afford or easily do for millions of communications at yeah. all at the same time. So, and so in an automated way of uh, man in the middle attack via on, on, uh, on, on modem, on, on serial um, data conversation, it might be possible to do a man in the middle attack on, on human interface with voice at this well. That's a yeah. It's a but different it, it thing. Is, it is like, a form of biometric authentication because it uses the voice. Mm. But you can, you can also uh, uh, do things like... Um, um, uh, let your private key sign and, and look if the sign authority matches on the other side. But I won't recommend that because that, that y uses... Y you probably won't have to, to, to sign your, your keys. But that's for if you're doing it always automatically and you don't want to read any hash keys. Hmm? Can you use the microphone, please? <laughs> oh, thank you. So if the other person has the access to the hash key, then why wouldn't he or she have access to you reading the real key? Pardon? The other person does not have access to the key that you've transmitted to the other party if it was really the other party you're talking to. Two, two parties can establish a key and establish that their randomness went into it and the mm. randomness of some other party and one only went into it. So they can establish that, that only you and some party out there know a secret and that the secret is based on what you, what you supply. And then the only, the only thing left is a man in the middle attack, but then you wouldn't have the same secrets on each hop. Because you can verify that your randomness is used and only one other. The other party can verify that his or her randomness is used. So the man in the middle would have to establish two different secrets to, be, to each end. And you could verify that you have different secrets by just reading them, or a hash of them. Okay. okay. Okay, there's, there's another option if you're working with people you know. Um, you can share uh, a key by giving it to them. So this is really quite secure. Um, you can basically use your um, Krankenkassenkarte, uh, the card if you're ill here in Germany. It has some kilobytes, we talked about it already. And fill it up with random data and use it as a one-time pad. Um, so then there are no real key exchange problems, but you have to meet the people before. Uh, this is one that's of the reasons. That's not a key exchange problem. No, not really. Yeah, that's a that's a different key exchange problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This uh, this is one of the reasons why our device has the ability to use hardware random. Uh, we've built a prototype of a hardware random generator here. Uh, it basically it's just a Cena diode uh, making some white noise, which we digitize and make some uh, some numbers out of it. You don't have to do that. Um, you, you need some random data for public key uh, stuff too. And so this is a user option, I think, but in my opinion, it's, it makes sense. Now how can it be a user option if, if, if the device does Diffie-Hellman? Uh, because are other the ways device is not going to do Diffie-Hellman if it doesn't have any randomness. There are other sources of randomness you could use. However, they are not really that good. Yeah, so, so it shouldn't be a user so option. The, the well, problem is that also, yeah. Yeah. it's a cost problem, um, uh, mostly because uh, tuning that, uh, that uh, hardware randomness device uh, in a production line is not that easy. And mm -hmm. um, you, you need to shield it so that you have no, uh, no outside edge of interference, because if you can interference with it... Yeah, you, you can swamp it. Yes, you can swamp it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so um, the, the, usually the, the randomness is generated like in DevRandom under Linux. So, but, you know, even DevRandom is not 
not really, really random. And it's you don't know who owns your Linux? Um, yes. Yeah. They could just make a symlink dev random to dev null. Or, or yeah, but you need random for the communication with Diffie Hellman because you have to choose a known random, and if this could be tampered for your well, I, I communication. So, so, hmm? so the box should, in, in my mind, if it's a voice encryption box, it should include the random hardware and forget about all the chip cards and second serial ports and all that, hmm. because that's what, what I want. I want a voice encryption box that I can give to people which they can understand. No Kanken Casa cards, no PC interfaces, just something with, where they read the six digits or eight digits and they know it's secure and they press the button and it has a green and a, and uh, a red button. We line. have to customize that for you. So, <laughs> no, but it's, at this point we are talking about forget, random. Forget about the chip cards and insert the random generator because that's what, what people need. So if you are talking about random, we have uh, still the, um, regular ways to get a random key, like we measure the uh, key prints, uh, the duration and the delay on two random uh, key prints directly to the device. This is a regular way we get it and we can calculate from this to have a mm -hmm. regular random key. Mm -hmm. On the other side, if uh, you're really paranoid to, to get spied on this, we have a pin on the CPU to support a hardware um, serial, yeah, uh, hardware random input. Mm -hmm. You can buy, uh, build a device, you can get a, um, a PCB for it or whatsoever. Even if it is get compromised, if it is uh, able to measure, if it is not working at all, for example, it will get uh, verified by the device, like uh, statistics, if uh, there's uh, enough uh, yes and no to get uh, a real random or li something like it. If not, it will not accept it from this pin. But uh, this is also, uh, um, well, it's, the device will get bigger just for the random, which is uh, just a, a very small uh, bit in the relation to the key uh, pr uh, presses, for example, to get this random. Random hardware is like, well. But I think it's a good point. Uh, our device should be very simple. We, we started by thinking we would have uh, just a box to plug into your phone line and a big red button. That should be all. That was what we started with. Stick with that. You can. <laughs> it only needs eight digits. And that's yeah, about it. But um, you, as, as you see the VP1 device, it, it, it says it's key over the LCD display. Um, we think that we probably won't need an LCD display uh, because we can read you the key over the line interface and say you, your key is and, and uh, then you can communicate. Um, so perhaps you can, you can um, some parts of the telephone are just optional, but um, this is, um, yeah, let's, let's call it, this would be an SGK and we will see uh, what, what, we, what the really needs of the users are and, and probably then come as, customize uh, the things that the people need. I'd like to, to point out that we um, have a very nice user interface by using a standard telephone and uh, we are not able to do that now, but uh, we sh I think we might do that in the future to decode the DTMF tone. So you will not need a display, as he said before, and uh, you don't need a keypad. You just have the phone line as uh, the user interface. But, but <laughs> okay. that's just software. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question. Yes, uh, how yeah. much is the basic unit going to Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the biggest issue in in manufacturing uh, just uh, this device will be making the PCB. So, if you know somebody who is giving you away, um, I think a two-layer um, PCB on a Eurocard, which is uh, 10 centimeters to 16 centimeters, so it's, I th I think th the size won't shrink. Um, it will cost about 500 Deutschmarks at the, um, to manufacture one single box. If, um, as I said, the hardest part is uh, the cost intensive is the PCB. The PCB in this um, costs about the half of this board, what's on the board. So you can go down to perhaps 300 Deutschmarks. But then you have to, to make certain uh, 10 boxes or so. 
A single box will cost you 500 Deutschmarks. I think there, there, there will be some, some sort of uh, uh, do-it-yourself kit, <laughs> do it, do it yourself kit available that um, has uh, the nasty parts soldered on there. There are um, two chips on it, or three chips on it now, um, that are really nasty so to solder by hand because uh, the pin, uh, uh, pin, uh, pins are very near. Uh, and so um, I also think that, that we will find a way to, to sell these, uh, this hardware uh, in a um, politically correct way. <laughs> 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 and uh, in a way that, that the people that who developed it uh, get the benefit from it. So um, expect to to to, uh, to have it uh, below the 500 Deutschmark range, which I think is an, an, a very good price for for a uh, voice encryption device in comparison to uh, 2,500, which is the nearest uh, competitive uh, competition from uh, Siemens or uh, Deutsche Telekom for one device. But they are utilizing only ISDN, I think. Yeah, and these these are these devices. Are only utilizing ISDN and... Um, but at least they have a back door. Yeah? At least they have a back door. Um, yeah, the, the, the you, interesting you don't know. You the, don't know. The interesting you don't have the source. You can't look on it. The interesting... So you know. <laughs> the interesting part about this... I, I, should, I should say something about commercial uh, stuff. Yeah, that is necessary. Um, in, in Germany, there are currently two main brands of uh, telephony voice encryption uh, systems. Um, one is made by Siemens, and um, another one is made by uh, Deutsche Telekom. Uh, they are not manufacturing uh, them by themselves, but marketing. Uh, really? It. Yes. Uh, it's on their own? Uh, on not invented by, by a company? Uh, uh, it's branded Deutsche Telekom, and uh, the, as far as I can say, the Telesec, part, also they're using the Telesec infrastructure, which is a chip card system that uh, has an RSA coprocessor on it, and they're uh, using the uh, RSA coprocessor to uh, to, to uh, generate the session key and that stuff and uh, have the secret keys uh, safely in uh, in this card. The problem with that system is that um, currently you need to get your card with your secret key from the Deutsche Telekom, who of course promises not to store the secret key away. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, that, um, there's one project currently underway to emulate this card so that you can uh, simply buy such a box uh, from the <laughs> telecom and uh, get a get general purpose uh, uh, microprocessor uh, smart card. And okay, it might be a little bit slower, the, the key generation phase, but it, that's, that's not a real problem. And um, the only problem is that uh, it costs 2,000 Deutschmarks and you're still not able to say if they are leaking uh, clear text or, or keys uh, in the uh, in the cipher text, um, uh, because of the hardware design, um, most of the people concerned with, with, with this thing are, uh, are thinking that the hardware itself is secure, but the um, the backdoor is that uh, they store away the secret keys, uh, but you never know that. So that uh, that that is an, an option that. Uh, might be available in, in one or two months that, that you uh, go to, uh, to a general purpose smart card vendor, um, like for instance, side control uh, buyer and big smart cards um, that is uh, normally for your uh, for general purpose smart card processor stuff, load up in, in software from the internet and uh, store your own secret key there. Um, but that, that's an expensive option. So a 2000 Dutch Max uh, for one side is, is not that cheap. The original uh, Siemens cryptophone stuff is uh, even more expensive and is even more insecure because um, they not only have uh, that, that same thing that uh, they give you uh, the card with the secret key, um, but they are, there are also rumors that uh, on this uh, system there is um, uh, audio clear text leaked on the line. So that, uh, that, that is not, not a real option if you, uh, if you really have, want to have security. Um, I, I was unfortunately not able to, to get two of these uh, telecom boxes. Uh, I asked them very intensely to, to give me two of them to, so we did, that we could take them apart in the re-engineering tent, but um, they have only five or six currently and they don't want to give me, <laughs> wanted to give me one third of their whole no stock. No big market share. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're beginning, beginning marketing these boxes on, on 1st of September actively. Um, there, there was one small test uh, that did only test the, the, uh, the Comfort and the CT magazine uh, last week, I think. Yeah. 
and um, uh, up on this test I tried to, to get these boxes, but it, it was not possible, at least not for me and for this camp. So maybe, um, I think we will have them at, at the Congress, and I think we will have uh, the guy who developed the boxes at the Congress so that he can prove that he has no backdoors in there. And um, I, I sent him an email, and he said, okay, he might be interested to come. Then I sent him an email back and said, okay, uh, we want you to have the source code listing of your telephone on the stage, <laughs> explaining you every little line why it is there. And I have not answer, no answer yet, let's see. <laughs> Okay, um, there are other commercial uh, uh, voice telephony systems um, that, that are around. Uh, the most uh, knowledgeable one is uh, the STU free units, that is uh, um, the commercial um, and NSA sponsored uh, secure telephone units um, that are uh, American government issue. Um, these boxes also have an NSA backdoor because the NSA, of course, wants to read the uh, telephone conversations of, their, uh, of the employees of the US government. And um, there are some uh, telephony encryption devices around it. Uh, uh, you know, I better shouldn't call it encryption because what they simply do is um, doing analog encryption. That, that means splitting up the, um, the voice band into um, frequency channel, uh, uh, slots and then uh, flipping around the frequency so that um, what you get out is some. And um, um, they're yeah, also doing just it. Just scrambling. Yeah, and yeah. they're doing it also in the time slot system. That's that's very similar to what, what you sometimes hear on, on, on the uh, uh, police radio, what they're using. It's a very crypt system. And there are, there are also um, uh, voice encrypt systems that are using such technology out there for telephony. They are mostly sold at these spy shops. So if you, if you want to, to buy any encryption device, don't rent to a spy shop because they are selling the, the crap from the 70s as a newest technology for several thousand Deutschmarks. <laughs> so um, that is no real option. So, yeah. so um, um, you always need to determine what the security level is that you need. If you need only technical security about some private investigator, um, it's okay to use some unit from Deutsche Telekom or Siemens. Um, if you need something that is uh, hardened against uh, the real guys that are, might go behind you because you're doing some uh, really interesting stuff, um, then uh, it, it might might be not appropriate to, to use some uh, some stuff from a uh, company that uh, is mostly sponsored by the government, like Siemens. Um, so, um, but otherwise, if you're doing such interesting stuff, you should uh, shouldn't use a telephone at all. So, okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, so what is with crypto AG? Um, yeah, crypto, <laughs> yeah, crypto AG is Just mention it. Yeah, it's an insider <laughs> joke. Um, crypto, crypto AG is a an, an, uh, an company from Switzerland that is only um, located in Switzerland, but it's mostly owned by the Bundesrepublik Deutschland. And uh, through a an holding that are, is uh, run by lawyers, and these lawyers are also the lawyers of the Swiss uh, Siemens um, uh, corporation, so that that is in there, and, and they, they have several layers of uh, obfuscation in there. But uh, you 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 can get it that it's in, uh, owned by the Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Um, this company was uh, founded by Bruno Hagelin, which was one of the crypto gurus uh, before and after the Second World War, um, who um, also did a lot of lot of stuff on on uh, Enigma-like systems. And um, this company was approached uh, after the war, uh, really, uh, really, yeah, I think when Bruno Hagelin was in America, um, f uh, by the NSA, or the, it was not the NSA, then it was Office, Office for Signal Affairs, I think. And um, they uh, concluded that um, Crypto AG will help the NSA to break, um, break the keys. And um, the latest systems from Crypto AG are clearly leaking the keys in the crypto text, and that enabled the um, the U.S. and several other secret agencies to read all the communication. For instance, um, from Libya, from uh, from different Asian countries, there are a lot of third world countries that are using crypto AG stuff uh, or have used crypto AG stuff um, until that um, <laughs> that problem got public. Gaddafi and he was not amused. <laughs> it, uh, they, they were really not amused, and. Uh, um, this was really funny. Um, two years ago or three years ago, the crypto AG had a big booth on the CBIT. CBIT is the big, uh, big uh, IT fair here in Germany. It's the biggest computer fair in the world. And um, they had a big booth there with a lot of stuff and high-speed line encryptors, a lot of people there. And I came there and started asking questions. And then 
after I came to the more interesting questions, um, they gave me a crypto AG issue Toblerone, the sweeties, a lot of them here. And do you want some 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 paper? And here we have some some other stuff. They gave me a whole plastic bag full of crypto AG merchandising. Where just that I go away. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, that was really interesting. Uh, I told this to several other people, and they also got a lot of stuff. From <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> the next year, um, that whole affair was, um, the, um, it, it became public because a technician from Crypto AG was arrested, I think, in Iran. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, what was it, Iraq? I don't, I don't know. I, I just confused these uh, two countries. And um, they, um, because of suspicion that uh, uh, the Crypto AG is uh, leaking keys, and uh, this poor guy didn't know anything about it. And they held him for about a year or something like that. And Crypto AG did make the failure not to get this, pe this guy out there and uh, not to help him. So this guy got really what you uh, call a disgruntled employee. And um, he started, started researching and uh, uh, that, uh, that brought everything rolling. And uh, so it got public that the Crypto AG keys were leaking. So and the uh, year after that, on CBIT, um, the Crypto AG had a booth that would fit here in the corner. And the, they had only two products. There one was a, um, a crypto enhanced GSM telephone and the other thing was a uh, 34 megabit DS line encryptor for ATM. And um, you had only one person there on the booth and they had no merchandising material even if I started asking bad questions. <laughs> <laughs> they were completely ignored and they, I think they are, they are practically out of business because um, uh, trust is everything in cryptography and um, that, uh, uh, I became suspicious the year before then because um, I asked them what, what algorithms do they use and uh, what the key lengths are and they have some some very uh, slippy uh, uh, things about on their, on their pages how long the keys they use are and um, if you ask them what algorithms they use they say okay your dear customer uh, for us, so important that we design for you a special algorithm. <laughs> and um, then I asked the guy, uh, you know what you're talking about, and you know what cryptography is, and you know how cryptography works, and you know how algorithms are verified. Yes, yes, we, are, we have a lot of cryptographic experts, and we are custom designing for every our customer that uh, buys uh, some, some devices from us and special the revite uh, of, of uh, the algorithm we use. So th that, is, that is really, really, really snake oil what they are selling there. And uh, so they are, I, I think they are out of business now, uh, nearly. And um, there are some Israeli companies that are selling also crypto stuff, but uh, um, as usual, don't trust any Israeli high tech uh, more far than you can throw it because um, um, Israel is a an, 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 an very small country and everybody is, who's somehow smart there is getting in contact with the security establishment there and uh, uh, especially the high-tech companies are under heavy, under heavy influence from from the security agencies there you can surely bet that uh, Israelian security high-tech has backdoors. So um, you also can buy uh, voice encryption stuff from, from bigger companies like um, Crypto.com in, here in Germany in Aachen. Um, they're doing um, more the high-speed uh, crypto stuff, like not not a single-line POTS interface yeah. crypto telephone, but more if you have a T1 or a, a two megabit line or whatever, and to encrypt you can go Sorry. there. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> okay, and, and maybe maybe you have you have uh, two two locations of your company and uh, and have a VPN there and, and need to to connect uh, these these locations securely. You can buy the stuff from them. But uh, what made me a little bit suspicious was that uh, the, uh, this Crypto.com uh, is partially owned by a South, Ameri uh, South African holding that was formerly very active in arms trading and in several other suspicious activities. And so uh, yeah, it's, it's better to build your crypto yourself and, and look at the code and look at the hardware yourself because all these, this commercial stuff is somehow a little bit suspicious. Yeah? Yeah, I know they're, they're now sold to, to Atimaka and uh, this South African holding has now about 8% or whatever on, on this 10% yes, on the new venture. And the, but I'm still suspicious because that is, uh, yeah. I, I don't know who's own, who's owning Utimaco, by the way, because 
Uh, uh, I don't think it's it's all German anymore. Belgium, okay. Huh? Ah, okay. From um, okay. Did I mention that we um, try to build an US import version, which uh, reuses the key lengths <laughs> in certain ways? So um, the US people, if they really use it as a compiler define, um, won't have any trouble exporting it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a forgy bit, uh, just technical security. Yes, version. as a uh, to uh, 512 and and um, RC4 for 40 bits, okay. and, and that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> at least we for might, we might also America. have uh, a version which is not doing encryption at all, which is just uh, to do voice over modem. <laughs> <laughs> but well, this will be an option. That is a, the option for the French people then. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get a better phone line, so that like there will be no voice on international cords. Yeah. Have you have you given it a thought to do uh, to do uh, high compression algorithms like uh, uh, the uh, linear predictive codings? Yeah, we have verified that, and I must say that. Um, this CPU has no floating point. So um, all these implementation we have seen that I can may use for, for uh, doing a better, using a better codec are mostly floating point. So, um, and they are so intensive in, in, in calculating that it, won't, it really won't run on, on this hardware. Because we, we did some experiments with uh, Speak Freely, uh, a PC package. Yeah, you mean the LPC 10 codec, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. we, and we, uh, we uh, successfully had uh, uh, fully understandable speech, although the biometrics would be difficult, yeah, it would be hard to, bit lit synthetic. to, to understand, mm -hmm. what, to hear mm -hmm. whether it was really the person you think it was. But the... Um, the, the speech was still good enough at 2400 BPS, mm. meaning that even with but all the loss... It was 48. It was 48. 24, 24 was bad. Oh, 24 was bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But we, anyway, we, yeah, yeah. it still worked over a GSM data uh, stream, yeah. which means you That's could build true. a version of the, horny little, of the harmless little box, yeah. uh, but, uh, which mm. would then have an infrared LED, which would just talk to your GSM telephone. Mm. If, if you... Um, the point is, if, if you try to use that codec on, on integer-only hardware, you have to redesign it and to re-implement that to, I uh, to um, make down these, um, what, they, what they do. Um, you, can, these, you can buy codecs uh, that are doing this by integer, like LPC-10, from um, companies that do uh, that develop commercial codecs for DSPs or this like, um, but they cost a hell. And, and you mean to license or, or every yeah. time the license, the license, and uh, mostly they they charge you about hundred dollar per license. No, 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 no. LPC-10 is no ITU standard, and it was developed for uh, military systems in the USA. Uh, I think it's a DOD standard. But, but uh, E7, uh, 3 .1, uh, 5 power power. Yeah, and the reference implementation is still floating point. The ITU reference implementation of this coding is floating point. You are not allowed to use it in any way, and they will sue you. And uh, you have to re-implement that, and it probably uh, will kill your brain because um, this codec is wow. It's it's a codec. <laughs> it's just not the, the uh, lousy GSM standard, and and you have to 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 do, um, yeah, <clears throat> too much to 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 get it down to this. Yeah, APC ten was was developed on or as uh, on a DoD contract or to have a secure um, uh, two-way radio communication for the army in the field. 
um, of a, a very small bandwidth, so they they are using uh, using it uh, um, on radios that have uh, really 2.4 um, uh, bit uh, 2.4 kilobit uh, bandwidth uh, on shortwave radios um, to have secure communication there, and so. Um, this codec is fantastic, but a little bit uh, nasty in yeah, uh, regarding we'll to the rights. We'll see uh, yeah. how it works with the 120 megabit version, yeah. uh, uh, megahertz version. Perhaps it will do it, but um, um, I can't tell it now. Yeah. Uh, we might upgrade our hardware to floating point. <laughs> it might be cheaper than buying a license. Um, yeah, perhaps we, we uh, because we are only using the SIH3 version, if you buy a Dreamcast from Sega, uh, which is the next generation, it probably will. It's strong enough, yeah. Okay. But uh, <laughs> the point with GSM uh, is that uh, there's an option. We have IRDA, um, infrared uh, data. We could uh, connect uh, a uh, diode to, to, to emit such light and receive this. And by that way, you could uh, connect with your GSM handy, which uh, typically has this feature too. And if we are able to reduce the data rate, uh, you could then have uh, secure speech via GSM. I suspect that we have faster or higher bandwidth over GSM than you're already with this hardware. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Perhaps for E+, but not for the DNet. Okay. No, 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 no. And remember, infrared is light, right? So she, yes, she that yes, <laughs> yes. But make a tunnel to a uh, uh, paper no, it's uh, from it's your encrypted phone. Already. It's encrypted already. It's encrypted. I'm yeah, that's no problem. I take Isn't that back. Or uh, see to it. You, you also can do it serial. So. Mm. Okay. 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 I write down an uh, URL to get further information. You can find all the source and uh, the hardware design too there, and an email address um, if you want to get in contact. Yes. Yeah. So, also, I have a question. We have to um, set up. Uh, of those person still uh, uh, be here. Um, who's still interested in this project? We need Raise volunteers for the Windows software. And who's, uh, and who's able hey, to come on, come on! <laughs> <laughs> so, come on. Who's able to the program Windows on PC? That actually on, uh, talks on, on to the box. Huh? The, the Windows no, software that, that runs the software on a Windows PC because you you. You need the HLB only if you have no PC with sound card and enough CPU okay. ready and a modem. But you can run the same software on a PC on whatever operating system. Okay, so, so you're planning a set of interoperable things. You're, you're planning yes. a, a hardware device, a Windows implementation, yeah. a little bit right. of right, right now it's a standalone device, but uh, to, to extend the capabilities, yes, uh, we want Windows uh, um, software. We will need this, and right now our team is just limited to develop uh, the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. But we want to extend our team, and if there's somebody who's volunteer and uh, is capable of programming on uh, Windows, Windows NT, Linux, whatever, uh, um, well, feel free to uh, contact Mac us. Or Sorry? There's no license. I sue you. It's <laughs> free? <laughs> no. You can have the source, but if you build commercial projects with it, uh, it is not allowed. But what if you don't use the source, but you want to be interoperable? That's okay. So, in other words, I have no problem with that. The protocol is open. Yes, but yes. it's still not designed. To take that in mind, it will okay. take care of designing a, a good protocol. We have um, uh, the protocol from the VP1 device, and uh, perhaps it it will be similar to that. But perhaps not. I don't know because we have to keep more in mind not only for. Uh, using it on analog or ISDN lines, all, uh, we have to design it for IP networks also, not to reinvent the wheel if we ported an IP stack to the box. Yeah. So somebody is interested in joining our team of, of building this device and all this uh, software, please contact us. We want you. <laughs> okay. okay, any more questions? Hmm? What are the processing requirements for the for key exchange? Not much. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the company I work for uh, built an ISDN telephone 
It's, it's no problem because I'm utilizing the normal um, um, GNU multi-position library that can be downloaded from the net everywhere. And the code for implementing Diffie-Hellman with this library is, is it will fit on, 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 onto this because it's very small. You only have to, to, to read applied cryptography and then, hey, Let's, let's do it, just implementing it. It will, will take you two hours if you use this library. If you have to, um, to, to make your own big num library, then you will have to do more. The for assembly, and it's for maybe the C Mm -hmm. But can you can you port libraries from the GNU people to your telephone? I mean the compiler where you can tell the compiler That's very difficult. But uh, I found um, a short C code uh, on the net that's doing um, Diffie Hellman in only ten lines. But it's not um, it's it, it, I think it was from a C um, contest because it's, uh, the <laughs> ten lines are full of of information, <laughs> so you have to to bring it down into a beautifier. But uh, this code is very slow, very slow on on, on on a normal machine. But it implements everything you need. Yeah. Uh, very slow means what in terms of seconds? <sighs> on my machine. Um, 10 seconds, but um, this was calculating for a Pentium uh, 350 megahertz. So uh, I, I really can't recommend that code. Perhaps if, if, if you see that, which is just poor C, and you, and you say, hey, that, that's a nifty little thing, I bought in, it, it, in assembler, it will run faster, but I can't say that. <laughs> We also had earlier the idea in relation to ISDN phone to have instead in connected a modem on, on the top line, like we can have uh, connected a, a, a handy maybe in the future with GSM, uh, also to connect uh, or to have an interface to an um, ISDN telephone, which means we would just get the stream of the AD over there and just uh, encrypt the digital data like we use two serial ports right now and uh, give it to the line once again. But uh, we skipped that design because, well, there's too much telephones out right now and uh, we will not write uh, the D-channel protocol and, so out and support it. We will not get uh, FCC and so on. This is the point where we, uh, why we skipped this. Also, external uh, ISDN modems are available so you can do, uh, do it over ISDN or you can use an AB box which will, use, uh, which will make an analog line out of your ISDN. I mean, I have the encryption working. It's just that I can't exchange keys. I mean, now mm -hmm. I'm yeah, sure. If you have a digital all right, uh, already, like you have in the uh, ISDN phone design, yeah. it's easy to add uh, encryption. Just a question of which level. The encryption itself does not take that much calculating our, uh, uh, power. What uh, takes the calculating power, like uh, how many percent right now from the calculating power? We are About using 50, for the 50 percent. 50. Uh, we are using and for that's the, the old design, the 80 megahertz design uh, of the voice to get it uh, over a regular phone line, which is using a modem. So, tunnel link. <laughs> we are voice tunnel link um, uh, encrypted voice over uh, modem. Oh. I hate that. <laughs> okay. Some more questions? Yes. How using if you are using the device if you press a button to get encrypted or if you get a device which encryption is built in. Yeah, 
What do you mean? Yes. Yes, of of course, of of course, they can detect what kind of encryption you are using because you have to handle that in an open session. Also, well, uh, well, like that is always true because uh, others otherwise you 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 have to 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 say that this device is always using this and this type of encryption. So you have to to exchange the type of encryption, the bits that are used in an open session, so they will probably know about it, but probably know, okay, it's wasteless, it's a waste of time because he is using uh, a four kilobit uh, uh, bit key for, for doing the calculations on the public key system. Yeah, perhaps you you, you can uh, say we won't uh, exchange it automatically and we will set up it manually. Also, well, we will have an option like if it is uh, the second conversation, we can uh, still have a hash key of the old conversation to know if it is the same person we have talked uh, already on the crypto phone. But on the other side, it is uh, well, this is a problem of key exchanging on the first time. But uh, this uh, is a general problem which you will have uh, in any uh, encryption software, PGP, and so on. How do you know the other uh, person on the other side is the person he is uh, uh, saying he is? This is on PGP, if you did not talk, if you did not meet a person, how do you know what person that is? Not just on encryption on, on the phone. Hmm? If you know that person, you can just exchange a piece of paper with some uh, uh, first hash keys. Yeah. This is secure, yeah. this works yeah. also on PGP and so on. Sorry, I didn't get the point. Can you just uh, take the microphone and, and, and try to explain? It's just on the other yeah. side. I just said that if, if, is it really possible today to commercialize uh, any encryption system without leaving, the, without leaving any leaks? Because, I mean, now you have, you have good... I, I don't doubt you want to do Frank something. told you. It is possible, but if they know you are doing it, you will make no big income afterwards. But, but to go to commercialize, to commercialize yes. something, you have to mm -hmm. go through a lot of steps. So during those steps, you think you're going to go through without leaving leaks. Yeah, but, but if you, if, uh, the point is if you... If you um, also on a commercial project, uh, later you can uh, view the source and verify that it is the same which is pub uh, published. Like you're not just getting the device with a, a, the ROM and so on, but you can also hash the ROM and verify it and reflash it or whatever you want to verify that you have the software. You can exchange the firmware with the uh, firmware available and which is uh, publicly dis discussed. This is an open uh, source project. If you want to discuss uh, the encryption, it will get uh, um, discussed. You only have to available. build the hardware. The software you can, pile, you can compile on your own. And you can verify and you can get it from the person you trust if it is not tampered or verify it yourself. Okay. Okay. Next question. No questions. No. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.